Hello and good afternoon. Welcome to a great program that we have this afternoon. Uh, I want to introduce our program coordinators. Uh, firstly, we have uh, Katie Strickland, the Vice President of Internal Affairs for SUI. Very exciting title. She's also the Director of Committees for the Associated Student Government, uh, also known as ASG. And we also have Michael Furman, who works with me here in the Honors College as our Honors College intern. And he is also the Vice Chair of the Distinguished Lectures Committee. So welcome to both of you. And thanks so much for putting on this program because uh, getting engaged on here on campus is one of the most important things that you can do in your time here to, to further your progress to your future career. So with that, I'll turn it over to Michael and Katie. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Hancox. We're excited here to talk to you guys just about um, the different opportunities that you have to get involved on campus and kind of different sectors of interest um, that often I find not every student knows about or they know kind of vaguely, they know like springtime of youth happens and there's this big concert, but who plans it? Or that there's all these other sort of systems in place um, that students can get involved in. And so we're just going to kind of run through kind of those organizations for you guys today um, and also talk about how you can start to get involved. Um, yeah, so the I'm going to let Katie go ahead and start if you just want to talk about the Office of Student Activities and kind of what all under, under, falls underneath that, Katie. Yeah, for sure. So um, hi, everyone. Like Michael said, my name's Katie. So the Office of Student Activities is what I like to think of kind of a big umbrella. It's located up in the Union and can seem kind of like this really weird mystical entity, but um, basically the Office of Student Activities divides up into six kind of branches that fall, organizations that fall underneath its umbrella. Um, and it's funded by what we pay through our student activity fees. So whenever you see your tuition breakdown and you see that there's a student activity fee on there, the student activity fee is paid into the Office of Student Activities. And then these are the organizations that fall under it that get to benefit from that money. So first of all, we have our Associated Student Government. Um, we have a Distinguished Lectures Committee. We have SUI, Student Organization Outreach and Involvement Experience, a long name, but um, we have headliners, university programs, and then registered student organizations. So that basically covers every other active um, registered student organization. The Office of Student Activities, if you're wanting to start um, an RSO on campus, that's who you register your RSO with. So they cover all of the other active registered with the university student organization on campus. And so we're going to go a little bit more in depth into all these different organizations, what they cover. Um, do you want to cover HogSync or do you want Yeah, to? I can get this. So then HogSync is kind of this home base for anybody who's looking to get involved or looking to learn more about all these different organizations that we're going to talk about. Um, it's also the program that houses the majority of applications for these organizations as well. Um, and I think that's super important and something that a lot of students run into the problem of is, I know the VAC exists and I want to get involved there, but where, where do I apply? How do I get involved? And if you can kind of get comfortable with navigating HogSync and knowing where those applications are going to land, um, that's the easiest way, I think, to start your involvement experience and just learn more about what organizations we have on campus, as well as those registered student organizations that Katie was talking about. Um, a lot of those house their information here as well, too. Um, so this is this should be like your home base for student involvement, um, especially for those applications. Every active RSO has a page on HawkSync. That's one of their requirements. They'll have housed on here who they are, what their name is, um, who their officers are, their advisor, and then their constitution, talking about what their organization does. Um, and they could have a whole other variety of events logged into the calendar on here. Or like Michael was saying, applications under their forms or just documents for general information. So if you're ever curious, um, it has pulled up on here the page for organizations, you can go to that tab on HogSync, hogsync.uark.edu, type in a buzzword if you're looking for something, and then it's going to pull up all the organizations that are related to that. So that's, a, like Michael was saying, a good, like, touchstone. Yeah, and so Katie and I both work for ASG, so we're going to kind of take this part together, um, but so this, the Associated Student Government basically just serves as um, the governing body for students on our campus. 
um, ASG is broken into all of these wonderful um, branches. And so Katie and I have experience in kind of quite a bit of them, but like a pretty, pretty quick overview is the executive committee is going to be this team of people that you guys elect in the spring. Um, you're going to elect senators as well, and they're going to serve as the, the legislative committee just as um, in the federal government would. Judicial is very similar to the Supreme Court at a federal at the federal level as well. Um, they kind of mitigate problems in elections and problems in legislation. They look over those. And then the associate member program and the freshman leadership forum are two of our introductory programs. Obviously one is geared towards freshmen that I work with, um, but both of these are accessible to, to students who are looking to get involved and learn more about um, our organization. And then I believe it's, we're gonna talk more about kind of specifically where um, students can get involved as quickly as possible in the organization to learn more. Um, so for, for the, these first two opportunities, these have already passed this year. Um, but Katie, do you want to talk about AMP at all, about how that is? A, it's a rolling application. Yes. So like Michael said, it's a rolling application. So you can go to the, this should be on the Office of Student Activities or site. So just be careful whenever you are um, looking for a lot of the ASG applications or just um, applications for Office of Student Activities organizations in general, a lot of those are going to be housed on the general Office of Student Activities HogSync page, not on the specific HogSync page for ASG or even Distinguished Lecturers or UP. Um, but like Michael was saying, rolling application so you can apply anytime during the year and be accepted into the program and start. This um, is a great way for you to meet not only other people and a bunch of different grades throughout the university, but you're also getting to kind of get that first taste of what ASG does, how our organization works and functions on campus. And then you're also getting to make a tangible impact with that, um, with that work as well. You get to learn um, the different functions of the branches. And again, you're getting your foot in the door. You're learning about what an organization is because they just, it's pretty vast, but you're getting to learn by doing um, and any experience really within, you know, the organization that you're wanting to get involved in is going to be great. And so this can be a really great way to begin becoming familiar with ASG, begin learning, meeting other people, begin networking and begin figuring out kind of what branch you might be interested in in the future if you are interested in ASG. Yep. So do you want to tackle this too, Katie? Yes. So your registered student organizations are going to cover anything and everything that students are involved in. The purpose is um, to allow students this outlet to be able to form their or own organizations that each have, you know, a variety of missions that all cover so many different interests and topics. Um, so if you are interested in either joining an RSO or starting one, joining, as we've said before, a great place to start is going to be HogSync. Every single RSO, if they're active on campus, has a page on HogSync that will have a blurb about what they do. Um, it'll have contact information for their officers, all that good stuff. And then my organization, SUI, will also host involvement fairs. So when the Office of Student Activities in general will host a bunch of involvement fairs. So if you're ever wondering and wanting to be able to get in contact with an RSO, those are always really great places to start as well. Just meeting, figuring out maybe what you're interested in. Maybe you know you did something in high school that you want to continue with, um, and you want to continue that interest in college with a similar organization here. Maybe you want to try something new. Maybe you're wanting to join the UARC Speed Solving Club and learn how to do a Rubik's Cube really fast. Maybe um, you are wanting to get involved in our fundraising for um, Arkansas Children's Hospitals in the state of Arkansas, and you might be drawn towards Arkansas Dance Marathon. There are so many different RSOs. As you can see here, there are so many different topics of RSOs. There's cultural and international, governing, um, honorary and service, professional academic, religious, special interests. Basically, they run the gamut with what they cover. If you are researching RSOs and you figure out that, hey, I'm really interested in this, but there's not really um, any organization that matches that completely or any organization that um, I guess fits like the interest that you're wanting to pursue or that doesn't, you know, fit the mission that you're wanting to build, 
you can start your own RSO. Um, all you need is six members. Um, two of those have to be a president and a treasurer, and then they can be four other members that can fulfill however you want the positions to set up, whether that be a vice president, a general member. Um, if you want like a PR director, you kind of get some freedom with how to set up those six initial members and then can grow from there. And then you need an advisor. So an advisor is gonna be um, most likely a faculty or staff, a member who is gonna be able to sponsor your RSO. And then you set that up with the help of um, the graduate assistants and the directors within the Office of Student Activities. And then, so my organization, SUI, which I'm vice president of, helps cover that kind of RSO development process. So we help kind of have two, a twofold purpose. Um, we are there to help RSOs develop. If you're interested in starting your own RSO, if you're interested, if you're already in an RSO and wanna help grow it, if you wanna learn new marketing skills, new ways to plan events, especially um, during a pandemic, if you're looking for um, ways to have member retention, we're kind of a go-to organization for the, those tips and for those resources that you might need in order to achieve your RSO goals. The other half of what we do is helping students get involved. So presentations like these are very helpful, um, but we um, really help try to reach out to students, um, especially you know, whenever they're looking to get engaged, but then also just throughout the year, ensuring that students are able to feel connected back into campus. And we help them connect to different student organizations that match their interests and that they can engage in, that they can find leadership in and that they can serve other students through. Um, so we have a variety of programs that we, you know, target towards those two core purposes. We have our involvement consultations where students can meet one-on-one -on -one with our involvement ambassadors. Involvement ambassadors are um, upperclassmen students, or even we've had, you know, freshmen in their second semester of college. So students who um, have experienced campus life before, who are familiar with the university or want to, who want to get more familiar with the university and want to help su serve students as well. So they, those applications are normally um, towards, I would say, either like the end of the spring semester, early fall for the fall semester. And then for, um, we have spring semester applications that'll open up probably around like late December, January. Those are ways to become involved in our organization and to become involved in helping other students come involved. Um, and then other programs that we have include SUI skills shops. So those will help prevent or present different tips for RSOs. Um, we've had skills shops in the past that talk about how to get funding for your RSO and their events. We've had skills shops that talk about how to market with our um, director of registered student organizations who has a marketing background. Um, we also offer, let me see, um, leadership development luncheons, LDLs. So those are more student geared. Those, I guess, run a whole variety of topics. So we've had um, LDLs on why campus leadership is important. Um, what are some ways that you can de-stress before a test? Helping, you know, students get in contact with the resources at CAPS. Um, we've had um, LDLs about graduate school and how do you approach applying to graduate schools. Um, so we really try to cover a whole variety of topics and um, as the title says, develop leaders. So that's kind of what our organization does. Um, if you wanna find out more about us, you can reach out. There's suiinv at uark.edu is um, who you can email to set up an involvement consultation. Those forms are also on our HogSync page, as well as a bunch of other information. And then, so University Programs is gonna be another organization that falls within that Office of Student Activities umbrella. UP um, covers really all of the student programming that the Office of Student Activities puts on. So they are very events geared, and they are gonna be covering, if you see an event happening on campus or see, um, an event like happening in the union, I'd say half the time, it's probably gonna be a university programs um, event. They do a really good job of putting together a whole slew of events that cover everything from, as you can see in their committees, they're gonna have comedy shows for everybody. They're gonna be having movies that they're screening in the union theater. Um, they're gonna be having art exhibits up in the gallery within the union that people can go check out and 
find different ways to enjoy their college experience. Mm -hmm. um, with UP, they do a really great job also of having um, different opportunities for students to become engaged and helping to put on those programs and helping to serve other students in building a positive college experience for them. So as you can see to the side, they have a comedy committee, cultures and concepts, daytime, digital entertainment, music, public relations, um, and helping to promote their events, traditions. So they helped um, put on the hybrid pep rally at the beginning of the year for the freshmen, um, and then visual and performing arts. So that's gonna go back to um, the art exhibits that they've helped put together. They also have helped um, throughout beginning in the pandemic, we, uh, they had different opportunities. If you wanted to design a flower vase, you could come by the union, you could pick up a flower vase and then a bundle of flowers and then go home and arrange it or log on to their Zoom class and arrange it there. Um, they've had soap making kits that they've put out. They have had just so many other opportunities in order to make your college experience a positive one. And so mm -hmm. those I believe too are on a rolling application. Um, so that if you're wanting to be involved in a university program committee, if you're looking for somewhere, even just, again, another place to just plug in and, you know, dip your toes in the water and see kind of what you're involved in, this is another great way to do that. Yeah. And kind of echoing what Katie's saying about um, those rolling applications, um, if like any of these committees or something that you would want to get engaged in, those, those applications are rolling. Um, and so you can go again on to Hogs Inc and find those applications and, and get involved to just serve this, this organization as well too. Yeah, awesome. Um, so I am the vice chair for the Distinguished Lectures Committee. Um, and so for some students who may have been on campus for a little bit longer, you've probably seen some more of the work we've done. Um, for newer students, this is kind of a hard um, sell this year because um, we're trying our best to do as much programming as we can. But of course the pandemic is affecting everybody. Uh, but the mission of the Distinguished Lectures Committee is to bring high quality speakers of diverse backgrounds and stories to campus um, to teach students more about um, different just avenues of life and different topics that are like hot, whether it be philosophically or whether it be socially, um, just making sure that University of Arkansas students are getting exposed to high class um, education in, in supplement to their already academic plan. Um, and so like you can see some people we've brought in the past is Miss Laverne Cox, um, Miss Laura Bush, um, just people that have stories to bring and that students can learn from on our university campus. Um, and so kind of here's some more of these past speakers that we've brought. Um, the Dalai Lama was an awesome event, obviously. That was before our time. Um, but this, this list is intensive and enough to show that we, we try to bring people that expand upon your already academic career um, just to give you more insight into professional lives, into um, the lives of innovators and success stories um, to try to inspire students to actually pursue those routes as well too. Um, and so this is a student committee. Um, it's There's 14 members on the committee right now. I know we have Maggie Martin is in here too. She's also a member of this committee. Um, but those applications open up in the spring, probably around, around late March, early April. Um, and those kinds of positions can, can go from social media marketing. Do you wanna help logistically plan these events? Do you wanna help market for these events? Um, but also on the side of more data analytics, do you, do you wanna help run the surveys? Do you wanna make sure that everything is going smoothly the day of the event? Um, so there's a lot of ways that you can get involved. Currently we have a community series called Growing Pains. If you guys wanna go follow at UARC Lectures on Instagram, that'd be great too, to keep up to date with that. Um, and next week, we actually have Bob Goff, who is the, the author of quite a few books um, on empathy and just kindness in the world. He's coming to speak next Thursday, and there's a Q&A available for him as well, too. So some immediate ways to get involved with DLC. And another organization we have is Headliners. Um, they are basically the people who put on Springtime of Youth, as well as um, any some other smaller music events on campus for instance in the past they brought musicians to the chancellor's ball um, but their kind of thesis program that they put on is springtime of youth and so some past acts of theirs like snoop um kid cuddy um <laughs> borns all these kind of bigger names that they've got to brought to our campus um and get students to students get to go to these events for free because the money is coming out of their student activity fee so it's, it's a great way to just expand upon entertainment on our university campus, as well as give students the chance to plan a high class event like this for students who are interested in 
music performance or students who are interested in um, music economy or just the industry in general, um, it's, this is a great place to get involved. Um, it's, a, it's another committee of students, about 14 students, um, and those applications also open up late March, early April as well. Um, and I think Katie would attest to this too, that as we talk about any of these groups, if there's something that you're like super, super hyper interested in and just like want to get to work right now to learn how to like build that application or learn how to just um, get the skills to be involved in that, um, a lot of these leaders of these groups are people we know personally and are people who want to talk to, to fellow students as well about their jobs. Um, so don't ever hesitate to reach out to a group like SUI that Katie works with that can help give you the connections to, to build that portfolio as well. Yeah, so going on to the Volunteer Action Center. So the Volunteer Action Center um, doesn't fall technically underneath the Office of Student Activities. It falls under something called the Center for Community Engagement or CCE. Um, however, they do benefit from our student activity fee as well. So whenever you're paying your tuition, you're also helping benefit our campus food pantry, for example, and all the other great programs that they do. So the Volunteer Action Center has a student leadership board, first of all, and then under that board, each of those members help oversee certain programs that the BAC does. And so, um, the, or my brain just emptied, but <laughs> um, underneath the Volunteer Action Center is not just, um, you know, oh, like little service opportunities. They have these structured programs that are really great. A lot of times they're about a semester long and they're awesome ways in order to get in contact with different um, either community charities uh, throughout our you know, city of Fayetteville or volunteer opportunities on our campus as well. Um, and so helping you connect and network and find different ways that you can be serving your students, you can be serving your faculty and staff here on campus, and you can be serving your community as a whole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so to leave, I wanna make sure that we have some time for questions at the end so we can go through these kind of different branches of EAC a little quickly. Uh, but this first one is, um, the mentorship program Stream Big is focused on female mentorship um, at J.O. Kelly Middle School in Springdale. Um, it's a great opportunity. They're also working on piloting a male mentorship program as well right now. Um, so mentorship is great, obviously, and especially getting to work with people, uh, students, kids in middle school kind of help build your skill set as well as a mentor. Um, the Jane B. Gearhart Full Circle Food Pantry. This is our on-campus food pantry that is um, donation-based. It's mostly student-run, so if you are interested in learning how a pantry operates, you can either get involved like in their leadership team that oversees and coordinates the pantry's operations, or I remember my one semester, um, I was a volunteer within the food pantry, and so that was a semester long. I went in weekly for a couple hours, and I was still able to help contribute back to the pantry. Um, at you know times, I was able to work around my schedule, um, and I was also just able to learn how the pantry operates still, and then be able to be serving my campus community. And then Razorback Food Recovery is also, we have a ton of events on campus. We have Greek houses on campus, we have dining halls. And so Razorback Food Recovery works to take all that leftover food that is not used by dining halls, Greek houses, events on campus. And they're gonna be um, turning that around and donating it out to food pantries that need it. A little bit more on the food pantry. Student engagement um, with the VAC is basically their marketing as well as like their their main goal is to make sure students know about the VAC and get them involved specifically through Give Pulse, which is another website that you guys should get familiar with if you want to like learn more about engagement. Um, it's it's basically the home for community service and helps you document your community service hours and provides you with those opportunities as well. Um, so it's it's another website that I would get familiar with and it's what the student engagement piece works specifically with um, members of this board pretty much their goal is to make sure students have access to these opportunities and it is easy for them to get involved through community service. And okay, so I told, we have some PAL members in here and I don't know why PAL isn't in this slideshow right now, um, but back to these mentorship programs as well. Um, there is PAL, which is passionate about literacy, which is very similar to Dream Big, except it is focused on making sure students are, are becoming literate and raising the literacy rate in Arkansas. Um, so just keep that on your portfolio as well too. Um, Shout out to Amy and Taylin both. Um, 
so yeah, and then I also wanted to take the time just to talk about some opportunities in the Honors College, because I feel like sometimes students don't necessarily know how they can get involved with, with the Honors College staff and um, what the Honors College does. Um, so there is the Ambassador Program, which a lot of Honors College students are. Um, they just fulfill that minimum requirement of serving at Honors College events. But there's also the Honors College Advisory Board, which holds applications um, every year, potentially a reapplication in the spring as well, too. Um, and they get to plan, like right now, they're doing a charades event one night this week, or they just did a talent show night, and just like fun events to keep students engaged with the Honors College, as well as um, meeting with Honors College staff just to talk about what students want out of the Honors College or how things are going for them. And um, like, for instance, today I heard talking about students' requests to get the upstairs lounge back as a study space um, next semester, just like feeding that information to um, honors college staff that don't always have access to students that directly, especially in a year like this. Um, and quick plug for me and Dr. Hancock's the Public History Forum for anybody interested in the field of public history. Um, we just developed our first online exhibit and are working on our next one. And this is something that you can get involved in any time throughout the process. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of all that we guys have for you. Does anybody have any questions about these different groups, um, these different programs, or kind of this is something I'm interested in and I want to get involved in it right now. Well, sounds great. I know that Katie and I can probably throw our emails into the chat. Um, if anybody ever has any questions, um, feel free to reach out to us about our like specific programs or um, I will echo what Katie says about SUI. They're a great organization to help you find your involvement and help you find your place on campus. But yeah, that's pretty much all we have for you guys. And like we said before, Hogsink's always going to be kind of a really good go-to for um, if you're wanting to learn about any organizations, be that any of the ones listed here on the page, or even if you're wanting to form a new one, that's going to be a great place to go for information. So. Thank you both so much. I learned a ton. That was an excellent overview of all the opportunities that are available for students on campus. And I, I hope all students will consider getting involved with something that speaks to them uh, to help the campus community, to help themselves, and to really have a fulfilling four years here on campus. So thanks to both of you again. Awesome. It was so much fun. Thank you guys so much. Thank y'all so much for having us.